Hallelujah. It's now time for the youth choir to minister to us in song. And the next voice we'll hear is of our student pastor, Brother Kurt Boyne. God bless you. In Jesus' name. I won't fear. I'm filled with anointing. My cup's overflowing. Sing it again. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He goes before me. He goes before me. Defender behind me. Mountains and valleys, his joy is refreshing. Joy is refreshing. 
Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Wonderful singing from the choir. Wonderful singing. Can you put your hands together for the choir once more? <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. I want to thank Brother Marlon for leading out this morning. Can you put your hands together for him? <laughs> Wonderful. Good job, Brother Marlon. Give God thanks for all of those who took part in our service this morning. Bless the Lord for you as you continue to do ministry for the Lord. I want to take the time to acknowledge our senior pastor, Bishop Clement Clark. Come on. As our pastor, we give God thanks for him and for his vision and his leadership upon this church. I give God thanks for the council, those who are present the musician, the praise team, all of you God's wonderful people. Greetings. 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 I bless God for those who are streaming live on YouTube and greet also those who are streaming on radio and more FM. I greet the technicians as well, man on the camera. Greetings everyone in the name of the Lord. 
praise God. It is good to be in the house of the Lord and to bless his name. I look at the clock when Brother Marlon was introducing me and I'm like, I was like, I'm getting almost an hour to preach at first service. <laughs> I don't think I have a sermon that long. <laughs> well, we, we don't normally come on so early, but I give God thanks and we give him praise. I know Brother Shortridge, when he read that scripture, that lesson, he must have been wondering with all of those names. <laughs> I was worried for him as well, but he, he came through. <laughs> Good job, Brother Shortridge, wherever you are. <laughs> praise God, praise God. As you recognize, brothers and sisters, the lesson, the scripture reading is taken from 1 Chronicles chapter 4. And I'll just reread read verse 9 and 10 for emphasis. Allow me to read it from the Message Bible. Jabez was a better man than his brothers, a man of honor. His mother named him Jabez. Oh, the pain, saying, a painful birth, I bore him in great pain. Jabez prayed to God, the God of Israel, Bless me, oh bless me, give me land, large tracts of land, and provide your personal protection. Don't let evil hurt me. And God gave him what he asked. And we say amen to the blessed word of the Lord. I would assume some persons are saying, are thinking in their thoughts. Brother Kurt, I come with prosperity message. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, that's not my aim. But then that's the word of the Lord. As we look to this account, sisters and brothers, this account presents to us Jabez prior from a sorrowful state and how God honors those who seek him. Can I say to you, brothers and sisters, honorable people receive honorable blessings. And so I want to share with you on my simple topic this morning, something extra. Something extra. If you were to turn to the first nine chapters of the book of First Chronicles, recorded by Ezra, you would find a list of genealogies containing more than 500 names. These names make up the official family tree of the Hebrew tribes. Notice too, sisters and brothers, that it is within these long list of names we discover Jabez. He's buried in the middle of nine chapters of genealogies. Now most of us would probably be so bored by the time we, re we reach his name that we would just Mrs. name and just keep on reading. But by putting ourselves in the place of the original readers, we can learn a lot from genealogies like this one in which Jabez's name is mentioned. The writer of Chronicles used the list of names to show how God has chosen Israel for a prominent role in history. He would want to encourage those who had journeyed or who had just returned rather from exile and were struggling to rebuild their ruined nation. One commentator says these names 
show that God accomplished his purpose through their ancestors before David, Moses, or even Abraham. In fact, God's plan began with Adam. The genealogy showed that God's purpose was still in effect. The nation of Israel was his chosen people and they had been given the promised land for a reason. On careful observation, you will notice that most of these names are even are mentioned without any comment. But there is someone mentioned in chapter 4 who stands out above the crowd, Jabez. And peradventure you thought he was mentioned because of something he did. No, instead he was remembered for what he asked, he prayed, he asked, he asked God for. It is said during some of the darkest days of the American Revolution, after the Continental Army had experienced several defeats, a farmer who lived near George, General George Washington's camp decided to pay the soldiers a visit. As he approached the camp, he, he overheard a voice raised in agonizing prayer. On closer inspection, he saw General Washington down on his knees in the snow, tears streaming down his cheeks, asking God for assistance, protection, and guidance. The former crept away and returned home. Once there, he said to his family, it's going to be all right. We're going to win this war. What makes you think that his wife asked? Well, said the farmer, I heard General Washington praying out in the woods today. Such fervent prayer I have never heard. And so God will surely hear and answer that kind of praying. Such was the prayer of a man we are going to look on this morning. And he's known for a very short prayer that he prayed. Bruce Wilkinson in his book, The Prayer of Jabez, posits, Christians can live extraordinary lives by seeking God's blessings. Through Jabez's four-stage blueprint for blessing. Seeking God's blessing. Seeking greater personal territory. Depending upon God's powerful, significant ministry. And avoiding temptation. Thus, Wilkinson assures us that God always answers the daring prayer of his saints. Jabez, in a single phrase, added to his lineage demonstrating how to pray God's will over our lives. When searching for God's direction, brothers and sisters, we can turn to the prayer of Jabez. In it, we find an example of faithful prayer in action. In fact, before we consider his prayer, the text says that he was found more honorable than his brothers. But why did God find Jabez so honorable? I believe God found Jabez so honorable because his life was corrected, characterized by his sorrowful problem. Verse 9 says that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called him Jabez because I bore him with sorrow. From verse 9, brothers and sisters, the biblical text allows us to understand that Jabez, his mother, named him Jabez because he gave him, he gave birth to him in pain. The text says, I bear him with sorrow. Thus, Jabez's name means pain, or he causes pain. This, therefore, is suggesting that there was something extraordinary about his birth. There was something exceptional, more painful than the usual birth. 
One writer commenting on this text postulates that whatsoever may have been the cause, whether domestic affliction or public calamity, we may consider the woman as having bent in bitterness over her newborn child, having only tears to give him as welcome to the world, and feeling it, it, feeling it impossible to associate with him even ho in hope or happiness. Sisters and brothers, we must know that throughout the life of Israel, names were significant. A name usually defines a person's future, what they would become. From this, we can deduce that perhaps this mother was predicting her baby's future. But I can't help but recognize the first clause of the verse that says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. Here is a man who know only little of, we know little of, nothing of his genealogy, mother or father. All we know is that this man's life was permeated with pain. His entire life was associated with pain. His name meant pain. But against all of this, brothers and sisters, he was honorable. He was more honorable than his brothers. Conceived in pain, but found honorable. Oh, somebody ought, to, somebody ought to bless God right there. Conceived in pain, but found honorable. Jabez was conceived in pain, but he was delivered in victory. I believe Jabez was so honorable or honored because through his life, he was characterized by sorrowful problems. But the good thing about Jabez, I believe he had a relationship with God. Imagine the entire record of genealogy of Judah was interrupted by this one man. All the others, there was no comment, there was no mention about their state. But the entire genealogy was interrupted with this man Jabez. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Your life, brothers and sisters, may be dismantled in pain or by pain, suffering, heartaches. But God will find you honorable. Come on, tell somebody. God will find you honorable. Your present per painful trajectory is not the end. This path is not the end for you. Perhaps he was also raised in misery. Every stage of his, uh, his development was rough and hard. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. I was talking to one of my colleagues recently. And she looked at me and said, Kurt, something must be wrong with my existence. Why all of my life is permeated, with, is filled with pain and hardship? And so I could imagine every stage of Jabez's life was miserable and filled with pain and sorrow. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. But I want to say to you this morning, my brothers and sisters, you may be experiencing difficulties, but God will find you honorable. Oh, hallelujah. You may be experiencing sorrow, but God will find you honorable. You may be experiencing pain, but God will find you honorable. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. You may be experiencing misery and hardship, but Jehovah God will find you honorable. Oh, hallelujah. And so go ahead and live out your Christian experience because God is with you. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. God is with you. Oh, the choir sung this morning. Oh, you are not alone. God is with you. And if God is with you, he can see you through the difficult times. Oh, somebody help me worship God. God is saying to somebody who has been laboring in their pain and their sorrow, 
Go ahead. Move on. Live and glorify your God. Glorify your God because he has found you honorable. Oh, somebody help me worship him. God is saying, go ahead. My honorable child. I've honored you so much to go through the difficulties. I've honored you so much to go through the pain and the, and the sorrow. Go through, brothers and sisters. But brothers and sisters, not only that God found Jabez so honorable because his life was characterized by a sorrowful problem, but further by his simple prayer. 10a of our text, are the first clause, says, and, and Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, thou would bless me indeed. I can just imagine the man going through and living, trying to, trying to, live, to live for God. But his life was characterized by pain, misery, hardship. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. I could just imagine, oh, hallelujah. He just lifted up his hand and said, God, oh, hallelujah. He called on the God of Israel. Oh, thou would bless me. Bless me, God. Don't you see my circumstance? Brothers and sisters, I believe this is someone's prayer this morning. You don't believe me? I believe this is someone's prayer this morning. I believe as God impressed this word upon me. I believe this is someone's prayer this morning. God, won't you bless me indeed? In verse 10, we see Jabez' simple yet profound prayer. One man wrote, I used to think it was selfish to, to ask God to bless me. Then I realized that the word blessed means to have God's favor upon my life. It is not selfish to ask for that. In fact, all Christians should be asking God to favor their lives. And brothers and sisters, as I considered all that Jabez would have gone through, if anybody deserved the favor of God, it was him. My God, this man's life was punctuated by pain and misery. The very man's name meant sorrow and pain. His identity was connected to his name. One of the characteristics that about this prayer is that Jabez prayed with intensity and intention intentionality. He had an intent in this prayer. The Hebrew word for blessed is used twice here. It's so, it's actually bless me or bless, bless. Where the King James Version says, bless me indeed. It's actually bless, bless. Oh, hallelujah. It is used to, to not repeat it or for emphasis. So the emphasis is that above everything else, God, I want you to bless me. Oh, touch, touch someone and tell, tell, tell them, bless Bless me, bless me, God. Bless me, bless me, bless me. Come on, somebody. Bless me, God. Bless me, bless me. Oh, you, won't you bless me, God? Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. You see, sisters and brothers, when life has made you out to be a, lo a born loser, and all you have experienced is, is a disappointment, is, is sorrow, pain, and regret, your most intense prayer will be for God to overrule your life for your good. Oh, hallelujah. At this time, in point, brothers and sisters, oh, you only have two choices when the world has marked you out to be a born loser. Either you succumb or you overcome. I say either you succumb are you overcome? Jabez chose to focus his life on God. He chose to put, put God in the driver's seat and overcome his pain, overcome his sorrow, overcome his misery with the help of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah, somebody. We all long to be happy. It's our desire that we can be happy in whatever circumstances we are in. 
Some men often turn to alcohol, gambling, sex, drugs, and all kind of fame, fortune, and fitness to find the happiness their hearts yearn for. But Jabez, it is evident, brothers and sisters, in his, in his wisdom, he took his need to the Lord and asked God to bless him or to make him happy. But I want to caution somebody, uh, living, living a good life apart from God is never a permanent, or it, it is never permanent, but it's only temporary. Living a good life apart from God is vanity and vanity and vexation of the spirit. Many of us brothers and sisters can testify the best life that we have lived is since God saved us. Oh, somebody help me worship him. Many of us, we can testify that the, the best days of our lives is when we are living for God, is when we are praising Him, is when we are worshiping Him, is when we are coming before Him and say, God, oh, you are worthy. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we bless you. Oh, we honor your name. For some of us, all our lives, we have been living it apart from God. But the day that you met Jesus Christ, your life had a purpose. Your life had a meaning. And you recognize that was God. It was God working behind the scenes in your life. Spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings are, are the best blessings, brothers and sisters. So we don't, we, we, we don't find Jabez coming before the Lord with a long, long list of things that he wanted, that he believed he would make him happy. No. He just laid, he just laid this, laid the burden, laid the pain at the foot of the Lord. That's all he did. Oh, hallelujah. Sometimes I find myself just leaving right at Jesus' feet. Come on, somebody. Just lead me right at Jesus' feet. Lead me right at the foot of the cross. Come on, somebody. Lead me right at Jesus' feet. Oh, glory be to God, somebody. We are encouraged by Peter because he says we can cast our cares upon him for he cared for us, brothers and sisters. We should also take advantage of this gracious offer, gracious offer of the Lord and give him every care, give him every concern, brothers and sisters. To become a child of God, we must commit our circumstances to God in faith. Come on, somebody. The key here is seeking God's rule over your life. Oh God, I don't know about you, but I want God to overrule my life. Come on, somebody. I want to speak into somebody's spirit this morning. Oh God Almighty, I want God to overrule you, overrule your bitterness, overrule your unforgiveness, overrule your strife, overrule your burden, overrule your pain, overrule your misery, overrule your sorrow and God is going to overrule it. Oh, come on, somebody. Help me believe God. We want God to overrule every bitterness. All the tears that you cry. We want Jehovah God to overrule it. Somebody shout, overrule. I wish I had a mouth like you. Somebody open your mouth and declare, overrule. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, somebody help me worship him. Overrule in the name of Jesus. The first clause of our biblical text say that Jabez called on the God of Israel. I don't know about you now, but this is something big. This is something great, brothers and sisters. Perhaps Jabez, perhaps Jabez was aware that he was surrounded by idolatry. He knew that there were false gods around. His brothers maybe were still around. His mother was there. 
but perhaps there was a, there were even other people around as well as well but Jabez called on the God of Israel oh hallelujah to Jesus Jabez called on the God of Israel I don't know brothers and sisters I don't know who this morning you may be going through your sorrow and through your misery hallelujah yes there are people all around you but I want to commission you I want to challenge you to look to the God of Israel hallelujah to Jesus look to the God of, Jesus, of Israel you want God to take you out of your slum you want God to turn things around in your life you can't find it in any other but in the God of Israel come on somebody this morning hallelujah to Jesus oh hallelujah oh the scripture says some just in chariots and some in horses but we remember the name of the lord for the name of the lord is a strong power the righteous the righteous i said the righteous do i have some righteous people here this morning come on somebody i said the righteous run into it and they are safe oh somebody look to him this morning I said, somebody give him a praise this morning. Give the God of Israel a praise this morning. I wish somebody would begin to seek him. Come on, somebody. I wish somebody would lift their hands and give the God of Israel a praise in the house. No wonder Jeremiah, Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 33 and verse 3, Call unto me. And I will answer and I will show you great and mighty things. Somebody call on Jesus. Somebody call on him this morning. I said, somebody call on him this morning. You're going through your misery, your sorrow, your, your strife, your pain. All your life you've been living, all you're seeing is below. But God is saying, call on to me. Oh, glory be to God this morning. Call on to me and I will show you great things. Touch two people and tell them, call, 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 call. Come on, touch him, tell him to call, call, call. Come on, call, call, call. You want the circumstances to change, call, call. Call on the God of Israel. He's great and mighty. Israel, hallelujah. Isaiah says, he sits upon the circle of the earth. His eyes go to and fro the earth. Behold, in the evil and the good, he's big enough for you to call him. He's great enough for you to call him. He's sovereign. Oh, somebody help me worship him. Glory be to God. Jabez recognized that if he called on the God of Israel, he will take away his pain. He recognized that if he called on the God of Israel, he would take away his hardships, take away his suffering, take away his sorrow, take away his shame, take away his disgrace. Take away his misery. I want God to take it away. Take it away. Take it away, God. Take it away. Take it away, God. Take it away. Take it away, Jehovah God. Some of us can testify to the faithfulness of God. I said some of us can testify to the faithfulness of God. You weren't always like this. I said you weren't so blessed. I said you weren't so blessed. Sister Byfield, you weren't so posh and, and classic and, and beautiful. You weren't so blessed. Bishop, you can talk about the faithfulness of God. Some of us, we need to look. We need to lift our hands and give God thanks for his goodness. Give God thanks for his faithfulness. Some of us, we don't have much to commend us. We don't have any LLB and MDD and doctorate behind our names. Oh God, but look what the Lord has. Look what the Lord has done. Oh God, he took you from the rubble. He took you 
from the garbage heap. He took you from the miry clay. Oh, somebody help me worship him. Somebody ought to stand up and help me worship our God. The God of Israel who took you out of slumber, took you out of sorrow, took you out of pain. Oh, God Almighty, somebody help me worship him. Somebody help me glorify his name. He is worthy to be praised. He's faithful. Brothers and sisters, he's faithful. All my life, all my life, oh, I have to give it to him because he's, a, he's been a faithful God. Oh, somebody worship him. Glory be to God. Somebody need to say like CVM. Looking in, looking out, looking even better. Oh, God Almighty. And then we switch the channel and look to TVJ. Just look at us now. Just look at us now. Just look at us now. Oh, we plant your feet on a higher ground. You were on, you are in the valley, but he restored your soul. And now you're on the mountain top. You can lift up all the hands. You can bless him. You can praise him. You can glorify your God. There are some people, all your life, all you know is pain and misery. All you know is poverty and worry. Am I talking to three water lane this morning? All you know is poverty. But lift up all your hands and bless him and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. See, water lane wasn't always see water lane. Oh God, look upon the big church. Look upon the padded pews. Look upon the AC. Look upon projector. Look upon live stream. Look upon radio. We weren't always like this. Somebody open your mouth and give him praise. Look at this, brothers and sisters. Jabez was coming from the lineage of Judah. You know what Judah means? Judah means praise. But because of his pain, because of his sorrow, because of misery, there was no praise in God for him. All him no frustration. But somebody come on this morning. Is there a praise in the water lane? All you knew was hardships. But is there a Judah in the house? I say, is there a Judah in the house? Is there, is there a Judah in the water lane? Is there a Judah in the water lane this morning? Oh, somebody give him praise. Right there, Brother Curran. Oh, somebody give him praise. Is there a Judah in the water lane this morning? Is there a Judah? Is there a praise in your belly for Almighty God? For Almighty God. For Almighty God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Oh, sit down a little bit. Let me just close with my, my last point. Oh, glory be to God, somebody. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, God Almighty. Oh, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Oh, Brother Marlon, some of us have come up the rough side of the mountain. Oh, God, some of us have come up the rough side of the mountain. But oh, look at us now. Oh, we can't be ungrateful. We cannot be ungrateful. We have to give God the praise. We have to give God the worship. We have to give God our hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to him. I said my hallelujah belongs to him. Oh, glory be to God. Not only, not only God found Jabez so honorable, characterized by his sorrowful problem and his simple prayer, but lastly, by his 
spiritual privilege. Hear what part B or the latter part of the text says, verse 10. Enlarge my coast. Some versions say, enlarge my borders. And that thy hand might be with me. And that thou would keep me from evil. When God bless you, you know, the devil is going to oppress you. So you want God's hand to keep you from evil. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God granted him all that he requested. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. Jabez's inheritance was by faith over heritage. God blessed Jabez not with prosperity in return for his prayers, but with provision for the will of God. Hallelujah. Which to ex execute through his life. After Jabez asked God to enlarge, to extend, to lengthen his territories, he further petitions God for two things. Protection and preservation. Protection and preservation. Brothers and sisters, I want you to know that God is going to enlarge some people's borders. Hallelujah. Come here, brothers. Come here. Come here. Come here. Let me, let me, let me try to illustrate something. I saw, I saw this, this done. Come, come, come. Come. I saw this done by one of my colleagues, Elsie Lauriston Jr. Just, just make, a big, make a circle. Make a circle. Make it right here. Make it right here. Youth choir, all of you come. All, all of you choir come. So who all of you choir come. Go around and cut and go around them. Yes. So hold hands, you choir, right around. Yes. Make, stretch it out. Stretch it out, you choir. Stretch it out. Girl, stretch it out. This, this is where Jabez was. I said, this is where Jabez was. I said, church, I said, this is where Jabez was. You seen me? This, this was Jabez's territory. This was where he was. This is all that he knew. And if we recognize the, the, the context of our text, it was an agrarian society. It was an agricultural society. All they did was farming and plowing and rearing animals. And so all, he's had, all he had was this territory right here confinement and limitations and, and immobility and, and lukewarmness and all he had was confinement and so Jabez said God enlarge my territories enlarge my borders God enlarge my territory enlarge my borders hallelujah to Jesus I believe God is going to enlarge somebody borders this morning who am I talking to in the church I believe God is going to enlarge he's going to push back the borders because God is with you through your pain he's with you through your suffering and one of these days he's going to enlarge he's going to enlarge and you're going to live in the overflow you're going to live in the overflow the devil would want ever anything else for you to come out of confinement to come out of sin to come out of bitterness hallelujah Jesus, but God has sent me this morning to tell you, enlarge, enlarge, enlarge. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, church. Come on, somebody shout, enlarge, 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 enlarge. Oh, God Almighty. Thank you, you. Thank you, thank you. Come on, somebody. God is going to enlarge. Come on. Touch seven people. Touch seven people and tell them enlarge, enlarge, enlarge. Come on, church. Seven people. Seven people. Say enlarge, enlarge, enlarge. Enlarge, enlarge. Come on, speak it prophetically. Enlarge, enlarge. Extension, 
expansion in the name of Jesus push back the borders push back the borders push back the borders push back the limitations push them back push back the borders in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on declare it over yourself lift them all your hands I said lift up your hand lift up your hand because when God has blessed you no demon no devil can stop it no witch worker no sorcerer nobody can stop it I said nobody can stop it enlarge extension expansion push back the borders push back the limitations in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus this morning I said this morning not another day I said not another day I said not another day poverty will not be your best friend anymore I said poverty will not be your best friend anymore my I said poverty, yeah, I can't do the most. I said poverty will not be your best friend anymore. You can't be a child of God. You can't be a child of God. And all you know is poverty. All you know is distress. All you know is sorrow. I break it off of you. I break it off of you. I break the limitations. In the name of Jesus. We break it right here, so. Right here, so. Right here. We break it. I break generational curse. I say I break generational curse. I break it right here, so I break it. I break it. I break it. I break it. Generational curse. Break it now. Be broken. Be broken. I break it. You are coming out of your limitations. Every limitation, I pull you out. I say, I pull you out. I declare over your life. Every limitation, oh, glory be to God. You're coming out. You're coming out. Every limitation. Every sin. Every bitterness, every strive, every box that didn't see it. I say you're coming out. You're coming out of your limitation. You're coming out of your confinement. What people said over your life, people have named you pain. I said they name your pain. They declared over your life, you shall be a pain. But God said you shall be blessed, blessed. I said, I'm name your pain. But God said to tell you, I have called you blessed, blessed, blessed. Somebody shout, blessed, blessed, blessed. Come on, call, call, call your family member's name. They must come out of poverty. They must come out of sin. They must come out of their box to the state. Somebody shout, blessed. I'm closing right here. Come on, worship him. I'm closing right here. Oh, God. Oh, God. I want God to break poverty over your life. I want God to break the pain over your life. Too much sorrow. Too much sorrow. Too much misery. Too much unforgiveness. Too much strife, too much bad mind. God! Oh Jesus! Is this someone's prayer this morning? Is this someone's prayer this morning? You want this prayer to be prayed over you this morning? Come at this altar, come, come. All you know in your life is sorrow, pain, misery. All you know is hardship. When will will daylight over your life? When will you when will you see 
Hallelujah. The hand of God in your life this morning, this morning, this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Years of torment. Years of crying. Yourself to sleep. Years of misery and sorrow. And struggling to make it. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. As you come believe your God. As you come believe your God. I said, as you come believe your God. Oh, hallelujah to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Sing that song. Oh, hallelujah. Bless me. Bless me. having the faith and the confidence we need to shut back God this morning to see the face of God this morning to break that curse over your life come on somebody to break the limitations over your life to break the confinement over your life I pray that God will give you an insight how to come out I pray that God will give you a light in the darkness I want to appeal to somebody under the hearing of my voice this morning. You cannot live the, this blessed life apart from God. I say you cannot live the good, in the goodness of God and don't have him. And so I challenge somebody this morning. You want this enlargement. You want this grace on your life. You want this, this blessedness upon your life. You cannot live it outside of God. There is a requirement. There has to be relationship with Him. There has to be relationship with Him. Relationship with God. Plus enlargement. You become a miracle for God. You become great for God. We're going to believe God right now and pray. Eternal God and our Father. We look to you now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. As your people, Lord God Almighty, I've come to this altar of prayer. We pray, Lord Jesus. We pray, Almighty God. We'll pray in the name of Jesus. Everybody at the altar, hold on to somebody's hand. Right across this altar. Yes, Lord. By your Spirit, God. By your Holy Spirit, God, you are doing it. By your spirit, Lord Jesus, you're doing it. Right across this altar and even the rest of this house. I pray, Lord God Almighty, what you are breaking in this daughter's life, you're breaking in everyone's life. I pray, Lord, as we hold hands, we believe, God, by faith, that the sorrow is broken, that the pain is broken, that the bitterness is broken, 
that the unforgiveness is broken that the sin Lord God Almighty is broken that the limitations are broken that the confinement is broken I pray God Almighty that even now Lord as your people hold hands across this altar I pray Lord God Almighty you'll break them free oh God Almighty loose them from every enslavement every enslavement father I pray Lord God you will deliver them you will set them free I pray for a release in the name of Jesus I pray God that there will be a release over your people I pray Lord God Almighty they shall see an increase of your favor they shall see an increase of your love they shall see an increase of your grace Pour out your favor, God. Pour out your favor, Lord God Almighty. Children of God should be a blessing. I said the children of God shall be a blessing. The righteous seed of God shall be a blessing. I said the righteous seed of God shall be a blessing. No longer you shall be a curse. No longer you shall be below. I said the child of God should be blessed, should be favored, should receive the grace of God. Poverty cannot find you. Uh, barrenness cannot find you. Hallelujah. Frustration cannot find you. Live in the grace of God. In the name of Jesus. Live in the grace of God. I said live in the grace of God. I speak it over your life. Live in the grace of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on somebody believe God with me at the altar. Come on people of God believe God with me. As the people of God believe God with me. Believe God with me. People of God, believe God with me that He's going to turn it. He's going to turn it. That situation is going to turn it in the name of Jesus. Sickness in the name of Jesus be gone. Sickness be gone. Disease be gone. All kind of curse be gone. All kind of curse be gone in the name of Jesus. Every sickness, every illness. Every ailment, every confinement, every limitation, every sin, every backslidden state, be gone in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive it in your spirit, brothers and sisters. Receive it in your spirit. That after today, God shall give you a way out. But it starts with seeking his face like Jabez. Seeking his face like Jabez. One simple prayer. One simple prayer. Oh Lord, if you will bless me. Bless me. Bless me. Come on somebody. Oh hallelujah to Jesus. Bless me. And keep your hand on me God. I said, God, keep your hand on me. Don't allow me to get puffed up and filled with pride. Keep your hand on me, God. When I become wayward, when I become lewd and bad mind and wicked, keep your hand on me, God. 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 Keep me humble. Keep me humble. Keep me humble, God. Keep your hand on me, God. And keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We believe God this morning. We believe God this morning. Brothers and sisters. We believe God this morning. Nobody move. Brothers and sisters. If there is one. At this altar. You want to live in this blessedness of God. You want to see God break you out of the sorrow and the limitation this morning. But you're not a Christian. You're not saved. You don't know 
Jesus Christ in relationship. You want to stick your hand up right there where you are? You don't know Jesus Christ in relationship. Come on, put those hands up, man. Come on. You want God to do it? You want God to do it? Stick those hands up so I can see you. I see two hands. I believe there's, there are more. There are more. There are more hands. Come on. If you're still down there, you want to live in this grace. You want to live in this, uh, this, in, in this blessedness of God. But you can't do it without him. Come, draw near, my brother. Draw near, my brother. Oh, God, I'm right this morning. People of God, help me worship him. People of God, help me believe God. In the name of Jesus. Is there another hand? Is there another hand? Do I see another hand? Stick your hand up if you, you want Jesus Christ this morning to turn things around in your life. Father God, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus this morning, I pray, Father, for your son and your daughter. I pray, Lord Jesus, even as they don't know you as Lord and Savior, they're not in relationship with you at this very moment. But I pray, Father, that even now, that they will turn their hearts to you, Lord Jesus, and you will turn things around in their life. I challenge their hearts. I challenge them right now, Father, that if they give their all to you, if they give their will, their will to you, if they give their ways to you, you will turn things around for them, for their families. Oh, God Almighty, all oh, the pain and the, the bitterness and the strife. Oh, God, and the disunity, dysfunction in the family. Father God Almighty, I pray that as they entrust their lives to you, you will turn things around for them. In Jesus Christ's name. I say in Jesus Christ's name. You want to walk out for Jesus this morning? Just stay right at the front bench here. We're going to send a counselor for both of you.